I'm going to talk about how to develop apps uh, for move apps, which is hopefully the, inter the most interesting part for you guys. So currently, we have uh, we support apps in R, Shiny, and Python, but more languages might be added in the future. When you have your app, each app, as you have already seen, needs an input and an output uh, data. Uh, these input and output are the ones that are connecting the workflow. And the, the types that can be used are predefined currently. We have seven different input and output types. But if you are developing an app and you, and you need another input output type, you can request for it. We will review it with a bit of back and forth. We then uh, implement the, the new type. Given that this input output type is pretty restrictive, we have two additional ways how to put uh, files into the app and also to produce results. So on the one side, we have the we call them auxiliary files, which are additional data files that can be added to the to the app. For example, if you have an app that is doing a resource selection uh, function, then you probably will also need environmental rasters. So as a user. Uh, you can ask the user to upload its own, uh, their own uh, raster files to the app to do the analysis. And then for the results, you can provide also different kinds of results, so not only the, the analyzed uh, movement data, whatever the outcome is, but also maybe plots or zip files or HTMLs or whatever. So both the auxiliary files and the artifacts, which are the, the, the results of the, of the um, app, don't have any kind of limitation on type or on number. So it's up to, absolutely up to the developer to decide um, how many files are needed to, to run the analysis and then what kind of results might be useful um, to produce. As Andrea already said, all code needs to be on GitHub and it needs to be a public repository in order to, to put the app on, on move apps. Now, how do you actually create an app? So I'll quickly go through the steps and then I'll show you uh, on the web page how to go through this. So we provide templates that contain all files that you need to fill out to produce, to create an app. And you can locally test an app because this template emulates move apps locally. So you can, if the app is running on your computer um, in this environment, in, in, in testing it as, uh, with, with the steps that we provide, you can be pretty sure that it will run also on move apps. And additionally to this, as Move Apps is constantly being developed, we all the changes that are happening on Move Apps are reflected on the on the templates. And once a week, you get the pull request to your repository that you have created with the changes. So you can always be sure that when you update your app, you're actually testing it in the current environment of Move Apps. Then, of course, you have to write the, the app, uh, the code for the app, and give some specifications about it. Write the thorough documentation so all users know what the app is meant for and how to set the different settings. You can test it, you <coughs> test it locally. You upload all the changes you have done to, the GitHub, to your GitHub repository, make a release, initiate an app on Move Apps, submit the first version. We then get an email, we review it, we build it, and then you get an email. It's built, it's available for you. And then you have a try. Uh, private trial version that is only visible for you, in which you can test your app and see if, it's, if it does what you uh, intended to do. Then you can approve it if you find errors or you want to do changes, you retract it, make the changes, and start again the process. And uh, in the end, as Andrea already said, at some points there's no way around it, but you have to deprecate an app, so you have also the possibility to deprecate it. Once it's deprecated, there's no way back. If you want to, then you find a way to fix this app or whatever, you just have to submit a completely new one, just as a side note. So, how do you act? What are the first question? So, we have a pretty thorough and uh, hopefully kind of complete uh, user manual which we are currently also updating and here you can find uh, many um, instructions of how to run workflows but also how to build the apps so if we for example go to here the R tutorials how to create an R app so we have the same for Python as well um, here we provide the links to the to the templates 
So let's go and have a look at one of these templates. For example, this is for uh, R. And you can see here many, many, many different files. So this can be really overwhelming and confusing because there are many files. The reason for these many files is for emulating move apps locally. But we have created the schematics to highlight which files actually are needed um, to be modified and adjusted. So those highlighted in red are those that you have to modify in order to create your app. Those in green are those that you will be using to, to um, test your app locally. Some of them you have to adjust, others you just have to run. The one in blue is the, the developer readme, and there is more information of how to use the, the template. For example, you can also use your template within a Docker environment locally on your computer to test it if, if um, there's like major debugging needed. And as I told you, the, the, your repository will be synced with the template if changes happen. But of course, we don't want to overwrite all the stuff that you have uh, written to create your app. So those that have the, the square box are those that um, will be ignored in the, in the pull request. Then, yeah, so once you are here, so how do you use this as a template? So here use this as a template. So you create a new repository. And what happens is because we are now on Kami's GitHub, Kami <laughs> could um, basically you just rename the repository to your future app. And then an exact copy of this template will be on your GitHub. And then from there, you can start um, modifying it. We also have in the, in the, in the manual, we also have um, instructions of how, uh, if you have never done this with GitHub, how to use uh, GitHub in our studio or for the people using Python, which, which are the, the, the programs that you use um, to, to work uh, interactively with, with GitHub. Sorry. Yes. Uh, this process is actually about any R shiny app, isn't R. it? Or, so, it's, so, it's, okay. so we have R. Yes. And then Shiny is still R, but it's, yeah. it's, it's coded in a different way. So we have, and there are two kinds of Shiny. So we have, so there's Shiny and Shiny dashboard. It's a different way of, of, of doing the, the Shiny apps. And then we have Python um, apps as well. And each of them have a template okay. because each of them need different pieces, need to, the code to be um, uh, provided in a bit of a different way. So we can ha have no, a... These are not only for move apps. These are templates that actually we can... Oh, we created the templates. We created for the, the, the templates. So are the templates are for move apps. Move apps. So, okay. so, and another thing is like all the files that are not highlighted in red, so only the files that are highlighted in red actually get read in by move apps. So we have had the case that people have modified other files within the template to make their app work. This will not reflect on move apps your app will not work on move apps because you because those files just exist there to emulate the environment um, but will not be changing the entire system um, because that is not the, the purpose so i mean if we go in here like we provide like a little example like for just like if it's in a simple r function no shiny it just has your r code has just to be wrapped in 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 a function and um, there are certain things like that your data input has to be, the object has to be called data. And there are like these things, but there's instructions on all of this, um, how, how, to, how to do this. So now you have changed, you've coded your app, your app. And then one really important thing that you have to do is that you have to create a release. Because the release is the way that Move Apps communicates with GitHub and reads in only that moment the... the the code and the state of that release. So when you modify your code and you want to update your app, you do another release and then you can update your app by adding the new release to, to, to move apps. And I'll show you in a second how you do this. Um, exactly, so we go back to move apps. Yes, so we go back to, to move apps and in your home, Okay, so in your in, in the dashboard, you have this uh, my apps, and in apps overview, you find all the apps that you have submitted, which might be empty if you've never done it. It's okay, and then you click on initiate app. 
Here, you have to provide a, a title, like showcase, for example. You have to provide a description. What we normally do in the template of the documentation of the apps, um, you have to give a small description of what the app is doing. We just copy and paste it in here, but depending how long it is, you can um, choose how you do it. But basically, just a, a description so the user has, a, without having to go to the entire um, documentation knows what the app is, is doing and what it's intended for. Um, there is the possibility to give uh, warning notes to the user and this is really useful. Your app breaks and you know you won't have time to fix it like um, in the next days or weeks or you don't know where the problem is and it probably will take some time. You can then put here a note, app is currently not working and that really reduces the level of frustration of the user because they know, okay, the app is not working, there's no purpose in trying to make it run. Or maybe some features are broken. So you can always, com it's a direct way to com communicate with the user if there are issues uh, with your app so they, they don't have to like think about what they're doing wrong or what is happening and they just are informed about that that it's not currently working as expected then here you have to provide the link of um, your github repository so we can just go here to code copy this and then we have to select the which runtime environment uh, our app is actually coded for. So we have now currently the options R, R Shiny, or Python. In this case, it's R. And here now you see the input output types that are available for R. If we would select uh, Python, for example, it's only one input output type that is available. If none of these fulfill the needs of your app, you can here is the place uh, where you can request a new input output type that then in exchange with us we will make sure that it's um, general enough so everybody can use it. It can be a plain R class but it also can be a kind of a, a, not, yeah, a made up kind of class. So we have one of them is a list containing several. So one of the, the, op, the input output types is for example a list of, a, of the output of a um, several, uh, like the, I think it's a telemetry object and then the output of an AKDE. So it's a list of several objects. You can also do that. So it's really, really flexible. So now you have to choose. In this case, it's a uh, it's, uh, move two objects and we make the differentiation here between location and non-location data because the subsequent apps that will analyze location and non-location data will be really different. And then we just uh, hit initialize app. So now here you have an overview of your app, but you're not yet done. What you have to do is you have to add the version. And here, if you click on add version, all the releases appear that um, are available on GitHub. Normally the ones, um, if you have submitted this app before, the, the versions that already exist on move apps are grayed out. But in this case, as I'm using the template and the template is not on, on move apps, um, I just choose, for example, the, the latest one. Here again, you have to give a description um, of what has changed from one version to the other. Now it, it's just the first version, so it, it can be just first version. But of course, if you're updating your app, you want to inform the user what has changed. So this is the place where you can do this. Then each app has to have at least one category. Here's a list of all the categories that we um, came up with when, when we did this, but if you don't find the right category for your app, you can um, um, ask for, for, a new, for a new category. We'll just use data filtering for this example. And then, once you have done this, yeah, you save and submit your app. And now you just wait till you get an email that the app is available for you. When you click that button, Andrea and me get an email, an app has been submitted. And then we go to our account and can go and review the app. So we go here where all the apps that have been handed in are shown. And here we can go and review them. We have a direct link to the GitHub repository. So we go to GitHub repository, check the code, check that all files are completed, check that it's got documented. And then once that is okay, um, we can proceed to build the Docker environment. So here 
is um, the, the Docker environment, which we can manually also adjust. There are some R libraries that need system libraries to be installed. So here we can just name them and install the system library. We can also um, currently, we will atomize this, but it's not yet in here. So if a library is only available on GitHub, we manually enter here that actually the library has to be installed from GitHub and not from Cron. We will make this um, more automatic in the near future, hopefully. But now the developer has to tell us, please, this library has to be installed from GitHub. Once all of this is, is good, we go and build um, the app. <laughs> this takes a while because the Docker has to install R and all libraries. So it, even if the app is really small, it, 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 it takes a while to build. And uh, once it's built, we then click here, approve full trial, and then you get the email. And when you get the email, you go to your apps, and then, no, where is it? Yeah. And then you find this. So the stripy green app is the one that is uh, in trial version. So this app only you can see, Andrea and me too, but nobody else. And then you can test it, see if it works. So you can include it in workflow and uh, use it as any other normal app. And once you're um, happy with it or not, you go into the app and here you have the button approve or retract. So you approve it if you're happy and make it available to all the community of move apps or you retract it, fix it, submit it again, and go through the, through the process. Yeah, and then deprecation. So if you go, why is it? Ah, you can't so you can't deprecate an app that is not approved. Yes. So if you go into any other app, so here are the ones that are grayed out, well, they also have to deprecate it, is those that you already have deprecated. If you go into any other app, you can click on the deprecate app. Here you include the message, why you're deprecating, and if there is the equivalent app already available on Move Apps, you can name it here. It doesn't have to, so here the, the list of, of apps on Move Apps appear, and you can choose one, but it does not have to be, because maybe it's not the case. So you just say, I deprecated because it doesn't work anymore, and I can't fix it, or I can't maintain it, or whatever reason uh, there might be. Okay, I think I covered all. So, but now you're thinking, why on earth would I go through the trouble of changing my code and converting it into an app? Because this is time. I mean, it's not just, it is once, you d once you've done the first one, it, it, you, you get the hang of it or how it's done, and then it's really easy to just take any kind of code and put it into an app. But the first one, admittedly, it does need some work because you have to find, you have to navigate um, how, how the system works. But the benefits that we kind of uh, thought of that are for us most prominent is that doing analysis through move apps makes science truly reproducible. Because if you, uh, uh, publish the workflow, uh, well, to publish a workflow with a DOI, it has to be associated to paper. Maybe you cannot do all the analysis of the paper um, on move apps yet, but maybe you can do parts of it. So the workflow gets archived, and then in 10 years, somebody comes and can run that exact that workflow because everything gets kind of frozen in time. So the R version is the same, the library versions, everything is the same as it is now, so it runs. Because currently, what do we do? We append some R script, and then you try to run that in a year, in two, in five, in ten, and it just does not work. Because libraries have been deprecated, because versions have changed, because functions have changed. It just, it's, it's not reproducible. It's just like what I did some years ago, I can't run exactly as it is. But this makes it truly reproducible. And then, the, and then another thing is what Andrea said, if you, for example, if you have live stream data, from tags into MoveBank, you can run these, these, these scheduled workflows and get information now. Of course, you can run the, these scripts manually on your computer, but you have to go to your computer and remember every day to run it. And here you get an email with the outputs without having to do anything for it. So it makes life easier. And then also, if you're in the field, you probably don't have your powerful computer with you, and you might have to do some kind of analysis, you can run move apps on your phone because the computational power is not on the device, but is on the server. So that makes life much easier if you have to do something in a place where you don't have access to a powerful computer. And how do you start? It's like, how, can I, how, could, I, how could I actually like, provide an app? 
So often when we do analysis, we have these bits of code that we always use, we always recycle, we always go to the last project and, and take, take those bits of code because it does, does something nice for us. If it does something nice for us, it probably is useful for, for many of, uh, other people. Or also, just like functions in, in, in R or Python libraries that, that we see ourselves often using can be wrapped up into an app really, really easily. And if some, always think about it, if it's useful for me, it's probably useful for others as well. But of course, there are also pieces of code that might be simple or complex in which you have put lots of effort and lots of thought. And if these produce a conclusive result, it's a really nice way of putting all those hours of work to disposal of, of others that can use it to, to, to do their analysis and maybe, I don't know, say, improve the conservation of, of certain species or, or, or do something good with it or just make their life easier. I didn't really know where to put it, so I put it here because it might not be really obvious. So you can do parallel computing on move apps. So you there there are some we have also in the in the um, user manual a description how to do parallel computing, and this can be really useful if you if if you need it. And as you have my if, as you have encountered uh, in the, over the last month, years, it's not so easy anymore to get background maps. So you have to either register uh, with the API key, but then again, if you do many calls, your, your IP address gets blocked and you cannot do calls. So we decided, okay, we need our own OpenStreetMap mirror. So we have a mirror that is exclusive for move apps to produce all the background maps so that we don't run into these issues and not have to make every user get an API key uh, for Stamen or, or something like that. It's nearly working perfectly, still needs some tweaking, but go, go ahead and, and, and test it and see if you can make it, uh, if, if you can use it and it's working fine, fine for you. And then another thing that is coming soon is that we are collecting the statistics about how often apps are used and we will publish them so that every developer and every user knows how, for example, how, how many workflows have used a certain app or how often has a certain app been used. And this is really useful also for the developer to actually know, is somebody actually using the app that I've put out there? So we are in the process of, of, of doing this. Um, all the statistics that we collect are completely anonymous. They're not retraceable to who is using which app, it's just the, the numbers that, that we want. <clears throat>